Alright, this is getting irritating. This is what's called being fractally wrong. When I think of one refutation to this, at least one more immediately pops up, like going through the layers of an onion. First of all, it wasn't months. It was a month. It wasn't monkeys. It was chimps. So unless you decide to be pedantic, in which case you might as well call this experiment a room full of eukaryotes, the correct term is apes. Secondly, what is even the point of this... I can't even call it an argument, can I? What is this? Why was this done at all? To prove that six chimps wouldn't randomly type out a specific sonnet on a computer in one month with no understanding of human language, the mechanics of a computer, or the concept of writing? Thanks, I don't need a proof of that, and I think nobody does. Look, let's take a person, an average Joe named, say, Dice Crooks. Mr. Crooks, unlike a room full of chimps, knows English language, at least somewhat, knows how computers operate, at least enough to know how keyboards work, and might even know a sonnet in question by heart. So if they were to give him a computer, he would just type it down. But let's say we change just one variable. Let's remove any visual feedback whatsoever. The keys on the keyboard are jumbled and have no letters, and the screen shows just a random collection of pixels for every key Mr. Crooks presses, even for spaces, line breaks and punctuation. Do you think Mr. Crooks will be able to type down the sonnet now? Or even a single word? And yet, this is exactly what this exercise is for chimpanzees, who might as well not see the letters at all, since they don't know what they mean. And that's changing just one part. What if Mr. Crooks also had no idea what the experiment was about, or that there even was an experiment? He was, say, from ancient Egypt, or better yet, from the time before writing, has never saw a computer and did not know a single word of English. So does this prove that Mr. Crooks is not intelligent? I think that's actually evidence for the experiment as being unintelligent. Newsflash, infinite monkey theorem doesn't involve actual monkeys. But then again, the mysterious they used by Brooks to describe the authors of this um, experiment refers to the British National Council of Arts, not any scientific organization. Thirdly, even if we replace the obviously horrendous example of untrained chimpanzees with, say, a random number-based program that matches numbers to letters, what would the failure of this program to produce a specific sonnet mean? Because I can assure you that it will generate words, given enough time and given more time, sentences even, based on pure statistics. But why are we comparing its output to one specific sonnet? Or really anything in the English language in general? It's not the only one that uses Latin alphabet, after all. In other words, what is this analogy even supposed to show? It is normally used to explain that Homo sapiens arising just from random evolution is so implausible it had to be a work of a designer, at least that is the context I've seen before. This of course is absolutely silly, since it tries to apply the probabilities in reverse, as if the evolution doesn't count if it doesn't produce the specific species we see today, and also since it ignores the clearly non-random mechanisms such as various selection processes. But then, how does this even relate to higher intelligence whatsoever? Marcelo Gleiser is not an astrobiologist, he is a theoretical physicist and a cosmologist. And I'm reasonably sure that I got that right because I went to his own website to check that, so unless he is mistaken about his own specialty, his opinions on any issues related to biology hold exactly as much weight as my opinions on them do. And it shows. He references self-awareness in the sense that it is a uniquely human trait, but as we'll see in the next part, it clearly isn't. As for developing advanced technologies, he'd rather wag on exactly what he means. Sure, we could say that a species that can build a nuclear reactor is intelligent, but less than a century ago we couldn't, so we were not intelligent back then. The same applies to pretty much every example of advanced technologies you can bring up. They were evidently invented at some point when we as a species were already intelligent, and if you go back far enough in time, you'll get to the point where the earlier hominids weren't that much different from modern animals in regards to things such as tool use. With that out of the way, let's address the last sentence. 
It is a blatant double whammy of assertions, first being that logic and reasoning are implicitly uniquely human, otherwise it wouldn't help Brooks's creationist argument in any way, and second being that it couldn't have a reason through natural processes. Neither assertion is backed up with anything, and so I really have nothing to refute here.